everybody, it's Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library at our downtown location in Lancaster, and we're going to talk about books! Yay! So, as I hope some of you are aware, this past Monday we had the uh, American Library Association Youth Media Book Awards, and it's like the Kid Lit Oscars. I look forward to them every year. And I try to read as many potential winners as possible. This year I had some surprises though, and there were some things that I missed, which is always kind of nice because, well, that just means I've got new book, new great books I have to read. So that's always a good thing. I have here a little stack of some books that I thought were particularly exciting that I have read and that I can talk to you about today. Uh, just some highlights, if you will, of things that I thought would be particularly great to share with kids. So the first one I'm going to talk about today was one of my, um, well, it's a graphic novel and anyone who's watched this before knows exactly how much I adore graphic novels. So this was a Schneider Family Book Award honor. The Schneider Family Book Award embodies an artistic expression of the disability experience for child and adolescent audiences. This book also won an Odyssey Honor Award for Best Audiobook. So it won an Honor Award for Audiobook, which is cool for a graphic novel. And it was also a National Book Award finalist. So basically, it's really, really good and lots of award committees thought so. Um, this book was co-written by Omar Muhammad and it's his memoir and Victoria Jameson is a graphic novelist who helped him put the story together and did all of the art. Um, and it's about how Omar and his younger brother Hassan spent 12 years growing up in a refugee camp in Kenya. And Hassan was Omar's only relative. At the time, they had been separated from their mother. And so Hassan was the most precious part of Omar's life. And he was torn between trying to keep Hassan safe and as happy as possible, but also going to school. Hassan suffers from seizures and is also developmentally delayed. Um, when this book was taking place, he only knew how to say one word. Um, so, Omar thinks he has to choose between taking care of Hassan and keeping his family safe and going to school. And a big part of the story is learning that with help from his community and by letting Hassan contribute and show his own strengths, he can actually do both at the same time. Um, and it's about the process of what it's like to live in a refugee camp, but also what the process is like to try to immigrate somewhere else, like to Canada or to America. Um, they eventually immigrated to America, for example. It's a really good book. Um, I'd say that it's for um, the age range of about eight or nine years and up. It's, it's a very good book. So there we go for that. This is the book that won the Schneider Family Book Award. And it is an own voices book, which means that the person who wrote the book actually has that disability herself. It is by a deaf author, Claire Anne Claire Lazotte. Um, and the setting is Martha's Vineyard in the 1800s. And what was cool about this part of Martha's Vineyard is that about half of the denizens were deaf. And so they developed their own form of sign language that both hearing and deaf people use just in the course of their everyday habits. And the story focuses on the main character, Mary, who you see on the cover. And, um, and you learn a lot about Mary's daily life. And then an outsider, a scientist who is not deaf, comes to the island to try to figure out what the cause of the deafness is. And he's got very ignorant notions about what it means to be deaf. And I'm gonna stop telling you about the plot, plot there before it gets too spoilery, but it, it turns into a very action-packed plot after that point. Um, it's really, really good. It's a great um, historical setting. You learn a lot about um, a time and a place that I knew very little about the way that she incorporates sign language into the narrative and incorporates people speaking out loud and people signing is just, it's really amazingly well done and we don't have enough books with deaf protagonists. So this is a really fantastic addition 
to literature for kids, and I'm thrilled we have it. The next book I want to talk about is another graphic novel, but it's we're only doing two today. Um, and this is the second one. This is this one won a Stonewall Book Award honor, and the Stonewall Book Award is for books of exceptional merit relating to the gay, lesbian, bi, and transgender experience. Um, so kids who belong to marginalized communities need books that are fun as well as talk about history and the importance of overcoming struggles and stuff like that. And this book is just plain fun. This is a fun, upbeat kind of a book. It's called Beetle and the Hollow Bones. Beetle is a goblin and her best friend is this little ghost here. Their name is Blob Ghost. They don't really remember much of their uh, history from when they were alive, but they currently are haunting a shopping mall. And then they find out that Ghost's previous best friend, Cat, who is also Ghost's crush, or not, sorry, not Ghost's crush, um, Beetle's crush, Cat, um, her aunt has bought the mall and is going to try to tear it down. And if they don't figure out how to get Blob Ghost out, Blob Ghost will no longer exist. Um, and you figure out that plot within the first few pages. That's really not a spoiler at all. Um, so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to rescue Blob Ghost. They're trying to figure out their um, friendship and their relationships. And it's just plain a lot of fun. And I love the art. The art is truly spectacular. It's a wonderful plot. If you like Halloween themed things, this is the way to go. Um, I just really love it. It's got great Lisa Frank kind of colors. Um, and the world building is particularly amazing as is the character design. I would also say that if you've got any kids in your life who like She-Ra, Princess of Power, the most recent Netflix version of She-Ra, um, they'd probably really like this book. I think, I think this would be a good recommendation for kids who like She-Ra or kids who like Tim Burton and wouldn't mind something a little cuter um, than Tim Burton. Our next book here is the one that won the big one. It won the, um, it won the John Newberry Award for Most Outstanding Contribution to Children's Literature. It also won the Asian and Pacific American Award for Children's Literature, which promotes Asian and Pacific Pacific American culture and heritage. And it's called When You Trap a Tiger. It's by Ty Teller. This is the um, advanced reader copy. I actually got this at the beginning of 2020. Um, an advanced reader copy is what they hand out to sort of promote the book before all of the final edits are done. But this is more or less what the final cover looks like too. So in this book, uh, Lily and her older sister Sam and their mom have just moved back in with their mom's mom, their Helmoni, their grandmother, and because um, their Helmoni is sick. And, um, and again, it's kind of hard to explain what this book is about without dipping into spoilers, but the major themes of the book are the power of stories, um, identity, what you have to give up in order to grow up. Um, it's a, it's, a magical realism sort of story. It's very rooted in the real world, but there are a lot of magical elements as well. There's a lot of Korean mythology and folk tales woven in. I love those kinds of books. Um, it's one that I keep thinking about. I read this one several months ago, and it's one that I'm still, every so often I think about this book and I still keep thinking about some of it, which is to me the sign of a really good book. Um, there's it's also funny. There's parts of it that are very, very funny. Helmoni is an amazing character. She's been in um, her community for a very long time and everyone really likes her. Um, all of the characters in this book are pretty great. Um, so yeah, this one won the big one this year and it's thoroughly well earned. When you trap a tiger, you'll never look at tigers the same way again. That's for sure. Um, a, another book that won a Newberry honor was, so this was the, the winner, this one got the gold. The next three are ones that won silver. This was one of my favorites of this year. 
and it's called Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. She also uh, got an honor for The War That Saved My Life a few years ago, which has been super popular. So if you've ever heard of this book, that book, this book is by the same person. So this book, when you try to describe it, it sounds like it's really heavy. Um, that'd be a very serious book, but it's actually really funny, which sounds bizarre. It's a, uh, it's a good hashtag me too book for kids um, that meets kids where they are. Children who have been through unimaginable experiences will know that they're not alone, but kids who only know about inappropriate touching and so forth will be able to fill in the gaps according to their comfort level and their knowledge because there's nothing super graphic in it. The narrator who tells the story is Della and she has a great voice. She's 10 years old. Um, and most of the really horrific abuse happened to her older sister. And um, so you get a little bit of the buffer there. Um, and a lot of the story about the abuse is being told in flashback. Um, Della and her sister are now safely with a really great foster parent. And that's one of the things that I really like about this book is that it talks very frankly and it's very matter of fact about the fact that kids live in foster care, that some kids have incarcerated parents. One of Della's really good friends, she and her mom used to have to live out of their car. Um, these are real life experiences that a lot of kids in our communities face every single day and they hardly ever show up in children's literature. So to have a book that just treats this stuff like it's normal that it just happens. We need more of those. And this book handles all of that really well, really organically without making it that big a deal. There's also a section of the book that deals with a young classroom bully who thinks that it's appropriate to pinch girls' backs to see whether or not they're wearing bras. And if they are wearing bras, he snaps them. And if they're not wearing bras, he pinches them really hard and calls them babies for not wearing bras yet and the girls have to figure out how they want to stand up to him and deal with him. So it talks about harassment on different levels. Um, that's all very age appropriate. And like I said before, it, it meets kids where they are. So it's a very empowering sort of book and it presents these topics in a way that's appropriate for all genders and for all ages and and it's an important book to have, but it's also a very readable book. It's a really good book, and it's it's a surprisingly enjoyable book. It sucked me right in. I couldn't put it down. And from what I've heard from teachers around the country, their kids are getting a lot out of reading this book as well. They're really enjoying it. So, Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Um, this is probably the book that won the most awards this year. I read it yesterday and was very pleased to do so. It also won a Newbery Honor. It also won a Cyber Honor for the most distinguished informational book for kids. It also won a Yalsa Award for Excellence in Nonfiction for Young Adults. It was a finalist in that category. Um, and it's called All 13, The Incredible Cave Rescue of the Thai Boys Soccer Team. As you might recall, a couple of years ago, members of the Thai Wild Boars a youth soccer team got trapped in a cave system in northern Thailand um, and this is a nonfiction book about the rescue efforts to get them out and it's by Christina Sorn Soon Tornvat um, and this is just a really good book um, it has a, a really amazing design there's loads of photographs um, and charts um, it breaks down the information really well. Like this is a chart of the cave that they're in. Um, it, it also, in addition to just telling the story though, um, it talks about the religion in the area, cave formations, how they got made, the role that religion played in the rescue efforts and also how meditation helped the boys keep their calm while they were trapped in the cave, the cultural differences between the British and American and Taiwanese rescuers and why that kind of affected um, rescue attempts. And um, it talks about all of the volunteers that went behind supporting the divers and the military officers that were there to help. 
Um, it's a really amazing book. It packs a lot in without ever feeling bogged down or hard to read. It's a very re readable, um, very accessible. Again, it's very hard to put down and it's just, it deserves every single award that it got and it's a lot of fun. So very good book right there. Now, interestingly enough, this same author won two Newbery Honors in the same year for a nonfiction book and for a fantasy book. So clearly this author knows what she's doing because Christina Zuntornvat also wrote A Wish in the Dark, which got a Newbery Honor. I have not finished this yet. You can see my little bookmark here. I actually checked this book out a couple months ago um, um, and I just for whatever reason, never got around to actually reading it. I got a couple chapters in and got distracted by something else. That's the perils of working in a library when you're surrounded by books. But it is so far really amazing. I can't wait to finish it. It's set in a Thai-inspired fantasy world where the city that where it takes place had been completely decimated by a fire a, a generation or so ago. And so the governor came, he's sort of like a mythological modern day folk hero came and he has magical replacements for um, fire, for lighting and for cooking and he's remade the city. Um, but is he actually a good guy? And the main characters are a boy um, who was born in Namwon prison and the prison warden's daughter. And I have only, I'm only this far in, and so far the boy has escaped from the prison. And um, I know from the flat here that most of the book is going to be about the prison warden's daughter trying to find him um, to restore the honor of her father's name because he let a prisoner escape. So. Those are some of the books that won this year, but I strongly recommend that you check out the American Library Association, Association's Youth Media Awards webpage to look at all of the different awards for all of the different winners because there were some really, really stunning ones this year, and I'm sure you'll walk away with something that floats your boat. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!